Twenty sixth of April, the long expected house search. The raiding squad had appeared here at five and departed shortly before my return. I found Eva in our rooms who was completely calm. Everything had gone according to the familiar pattern. You're Aryan, you Jews whore. Why did you marry the Jew? In the Talmud it says to us, every non-Jewish woman is a whore. They repeatedly spat on Ava's face and on her head. In our rooms I found the same chaos the bestial devastation by cruel, drunken apes, which I have so often heard described, but the reality of which nevertheless appeared monstrous. A diary manuscript were hardly out of their folders. A couple of books had been taken off the shelf and lay on the desk, but the Greek dictionary with the last diary pages was untouched. The diary manuscript would unquestionably have cost me my life. The real catastrophe, however, did befall the 77-year-old Frau Pick. She has again been terribly beaten and terribly beaten and knocked about. Your husband had the malt factory, the bloodsucker. Your litter is abroad and inciting hatred against us. But we've got you, and you're not going to get away from us. You'll be at the Gestapo tomorrow morning at 7. You'll go alone. Anyone going there with you, go straight to the concentration camp. Three fellows had tormented her. A fourth, alone with her for a moment, had whispered to her in a most friendly manner, take some good advice, don't go there in the morning. So. There are traitors, even among these people. Frau Pick said she wasn't physically incapable of going all that way to be ill-treated once again. She'd had a good life, and now it was over. Previously, she always emphasized her joy in life and her will to live. We were seriously concerned about her. At nine, she came up to see us with 50 marks, some jewelry, a couple of little things. We should have them if she were to be arrested tomorrow. Just before 10, I went down to see her again. She was sitting quietly in her big leather armchair, a blanket pulled over her, very calm but very pale, and there was a constant twitch between her eyes. I told her, we won't pretend. You intend to kill yourself. Think of your children. Think, well, there's life, there's hope, that the Nazis' cause is hopeless. Stay brave, etc., etc. I tried to give her strength in every possible way. I tried to appeal to her. Give me a word. You won't do anything to yourself. I cannot promise that. I will consider things once again. I said, why don't you give me your veranol? Where do all these people get the veranol from? That would not make any difference, Professor. I have other remedies besides that one. I am so tired now, and I feel so unwell. I went upstairs. We were all convinced that she would kill herself. 
a farewell note on her bedroom table was written in a very definite hand and carefully composed. I thank all, all who by their heartfelt courtesy have made my two and a half years in Strelen so pleasant. Heartfelt courtesy. How carefully considered. Can we cut? I'm sorry, but I, 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 I am so, I am so tired now, and I feel so unwell. I went upstairs. We were all convinced that she would kill herself. Farewell note on her bedroom table was written in a very deliberate hand and carefully composed. I thank all, all who by their heartfelt courtesy have made my two and a half years in Strelen so pleasant. Heartfelt courtesy. How carefully considered. Yesterday and for most of today, I was shattered. Now, towards evening, I am calmer again. Things must go on, even under these circumstances. Some kind of worthwhile reading will, after all, be found. And I shall risk continuing with the diary. I shall bear witness to the very end. Totally forgot. That's also a cut. Mm, spot. Did you like that, or should I not? Should I just get one? I got two, and I, I saw that it was too much writing on the page, so I got a small one. Huh? I'm so tired now, and I feel so unwell. I went upstairs. We were all convinced that she would kill herself. A note on her bedroom table is written in a very deliberate hand and carefully composed. I thank all, all who by their heartfelt courtesy have made my two and a half years in Strelen so pleasant. Heartfelt courtesy. How carefully considered. Yesterday, and for most of today, I was shattered. Now, towards evening, I am calmer.
once again. Things must go on even under these circumstances. Some kind of worthwhile reading will after all be found. And I shall risk continuing with the diary. I shall bear witness to the very end. This afternoon, therefore, these papers go to Anna Marie in Pirna. My latest fear is they're not absolutely safe there either. If this diary manuscript and the others are discovered there, they will destroy Anna Marie, Eva, and myself. But the danger is so great and so omnipresent that it makes a fatalist of me. This manuscript is my duty and my last fulfillment. Beginning. We're good doing the papers. Okay. Yeah. April twenty sixth. The long-expected house search. The raiding squad had appeared here before five and departed shortly before my return. I found Eva in our rooms, who was completely calm. Your Aryan. You Jews whore. Why did you marry the Jew? In the Talmud, it says to us, every non-Jewish woman is a whore. And they repeatedly spat in Eva's face and on her head. In our rooms, I found the same chaos. A bestial devastation by cruel, drunken apes, which I have so often heard described, but the reality of which nevertheless appeared monstrous. My diary manuscripts, however, were hardly out of their folders. A couple of books had been taken off the shelf and lay on the desk, but the Greek dictionary with the last diary pages was untouched. The diary manuscript would unquestionably have cost me my life. Oh! The real catastrophe, however, befell the 77-year-old Frau Pick. She has again been terribly beaten and knocked about. Your husband had the malt factory? The bloodsucker. Your litter is abroad and inciting hatred against us, but we've got you, and you're not going to get away from us. You'll be at the Gestapo tomorrow morning at 7. You'll go alone. Anyone going there with you goes straight to the concentration camp. Three fellows had tormented her. A fourth, alone with her for a moment, had whispered to her in a most friendly fashion, take some good advice. Don't go there in the morning. So, there are traitors, even among these people. Frau Pick said she was 
physically incapable of going all that way to be ill-treated once again. She'd had a good life and now it was over. Previously, she always emphasized her joy in life and her willingness to live. We were seriously concerned about her. At nine, she came up to see us, brought 50 marks, some jewelry, a couple of little things. We should have them if she were to be arrested tomorrow. Just before 10, I went down to see her again. She was sitting quietly in her big leather armchair, a blanket pulled over her, very calm, but very pale, and there was a constant twitch between her eyes. I told her, we won't pretend. You intend to kill yourself. Think of your children. Think that while there's life, there's hope that the Nazis' cause is hopeless. Stay brave, etc. I tried to give her strength in every possible way. I tried to appeal to her to give me your word. You won't do anything to yourself. I cannot promise that. I will consider things once again. I said, give me your Veronol. Where do all these people get the Veronol from? That would not make any difference, Professor. I have other remedies besides that one. I am so tired now, and I feel so unwell. I went upstairs. We were all convinced that she would kill herself. A note, a farewell note on her bedroom table is written in a very deliberate hand and carefully composed. I thank all, all who by their heartfelt courtesy have made my two and a half years in Strelen so pleasant. Heartfelt courtesy. How carefully considered. For well, most of yesterday and today, I was shattered. Now, towards evening, I am calm once again. Things must go on, even under these circumstances. Some kind of worthwhile reading will, after all, be found, and I shall risk continuing with the diary. I shall bear witness to the very end. This afternoon, therefore, these papers go to Anna Marie in Pirna. My latest fear is they're not safe there either. If these manuscripts and the rest are discovered there. They will destroy Anna Marie, Eva, and myself. But the danger is so great and so omnipresent that it makes a fatalist of me. This manuscript is my duty and my last fulfillment. Consolation, almost, 
is the visit I pay to our new house trustee, Richter, the lawyer, the Aryan lawyer, Richter. I had no reason to expect anything but a bloodhound. Instead, I encountered a secret ally. That is how much the party can now rely on its chosen people. Richter, a man in his 30s, shook my hand, said he would like to help me. He was aware of our inhuman situation. I said it was very important to me to keep the house. Again pleaded the, my heart problem and the interests of my Aryan wife. But I said, it cannot last so very long anymore. I do not believe that the house will be saved, but the man's attitude did me good. Richter informed me that a master builder called Linke has assumed my mortgage, happy about the 6%, which can now only get from a Jew. If there are no new laws, the house remains yours. But much more important than this information to me was what Richter said about the general situation. 90% of all Germans know that victory is impossible. Yet no peace will be made with this government. Who is still content? Not even the little party bosses, the block leaders. The people will sweep the government away. Hunger impels it. But when? The SS has been greatly strengthened. The SS is really a force for a civil war. He was appalled. The swine, the dirty dogs, when I told him about our house searches. He wanted, but I refused to give me a piece of shaving soap. But I must strictly keep my distance from you. Of course, Sir Richter, you are quite, you have a wife and child, you are quite innocent. No one in Germany is innocent. Why have we tolerated this regime for so long? I said that I was as certain of a collapse in the not-too-distant future, only I feared a general pogrom before the debacle. He did not contradict me. He bade me farewell with a kind of emotional solemnity as if I were departing for the Russian front. I must single out yesterday. 13th of February, 1943, is especially important. Yes, okay? D did that work? The two together? You're right, sir. Consolation, almost, is the visit I pay to our new house trustee, the Aryan lawyer, Richter. I had no reason to expect anything but a bloodhound. Instead, I encountered a secret ally. That is how much the party can now rely on its chosen people. Richter, a man in his thirties, shook my hand, said he would like to help me. He was aware of our inhuman situation. I said it was very important to me to keep the house. Again pleaded my heart problem in the interests of my Aryan wife, but said as, said later, I said, it cannot last so very long anymore. I do not believe the house will be saved, but the man's attitude did me good. Richter informed me that a master builder called Linke has assumed my mortgage, 
happy about the 6%, which you can now only get from a Jew. If there are no new laws, the house remains yours. But much more interesting to me than this information was what Richter said about the general situation. 90% of all Germans know that victory is impossible, that no peace will be made with this government. Who is still content? Not even the little block leaders, the party members. The people will sweep the government away. Attitude did me good. Um, yes, exactly. Okay. I do not believe the house will be saved, but the man's attitude did me good. Richter informed me that Linke, a master builder called Linke, has assumed my mortgage, happy about the 6%, which you could now only get from a Jew. If there are no new laws, the house remains yours. But much more interesting to me than this information was what Richter said about the general situation. 90% of all Germans know that victory is impossible, that no peace will be made with this government. Who is still content? Not even the little party bosses, the block leaders. The people will sweep the government away. Hunger impels it. But when? The SS has been greatly strengthened. The SS is really a force for a civil war. He was appalled. The swine, the dirty dogs, when I told him about our house searches. He wanted, but I refused, to give me a piece of shaving soap. And yet, I must strictly keep my distance from you. Of course, Herr Richter. You have a wife and child. You are quite innocent. No one in Germany is innocent. Why have we tolerated this regime for so long? I said that I was as certain of a collapse in the not too distant future. Only I feared a general pogrom before the debacle. He did not contradict me. He bade me farewell with a kind of emotional solemnity as if I were departing for the Russian front. I must single out yesterday, Saturday, 13th of February, as especially important. It brought the first sign and almost certainty that the revolution I believed impossible is brewing inside Germany. At Richter's, we talked for more than an hour in his private office. He was even more friendly, urgent in his friendliness than on previous meetings. How could he help me? I should tell him everything. He telephoned his wife. How large was her surplus of potatoes? We agreed to meet again next Saturday when I shall get from him money, potatoes, bread coupons. But much more important than this was something else. Richter came back to it again and again. Where will you go? If disturbances break out, you absolutely must remove yourself immediately to the country. There could be massacres here. He could provide a room, a kind of uh, emergency place. I asked him bluntly, what was he expecting? In the course of the next 12 months, there will definitely be a revolution. From the right? No. From the left. But. The bourgeoisie is afraid of communism from the old social democrats. He knew it for certain. But something can only be achieved 
through the army, certainly, but it was coming, only he could not say more. Certainly, if it didn't come sooner uh, than later, uh, soon, uh, certainly, certainly, if it 